Hallelujah. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to the service of Refreshing Life Ministry under the leadership of Bishop Ronald Lee Scott and our senior pastor, Pastor Angela Scott. If you're out there and you're listening to us today, we have two different ways you can listen today. You can listen to us on our website at refreshinglives.org and click Watch Party, or you can listen to us on Facebook. We're so glad that you chose to be with us today. Well, we know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing, and we're glad in it. We're glad in it. We're glad in it. If you decided to be with us today, you could have took your finger and you could have clicked it on any place else on the, on, uh, via Facebook, but you decided to be with us, and we don't take that for granted. I promise you today, you will be blessed, you will be refreshed, you will be renewed, you will be encouraged, you will walk away knowing that something was deposited in your life that will make a difference because the word of God is a different maker. Bless the Lord. We're so glad to see so many in the house today. We're glad of what God is doing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And to all our covenant partners, we send you love. We send you love. We know that you would desire to be here, but uh, uh, limited accommodations uh, would cause some of us not to be here on today. But I want you to know that you are in our hearts you are in our minds, you are in our spirit, and you are certainly in our prayers. Now, the next ministering gift that you're going to hear under this, after I speak, will be that of Minister Anthony Corman, who will ministering the ministry of mind. Without you, yeah, we can't talk, yeah, we can't live 
listen to you Take it out of me If it's not pleasing to you Take it out of me If it's not pleasing to you Take it out of me Have your way God, that's a heart's desire I'm tired of me saying If it's not pleasing to you Take it out of me yeah. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Yeah. If it's not pleasing to you, God, take it out of me. Have your way. We cry out. Give him some praise if it's not pleasing to you, oh God. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. Take it out of me, wherever you are. Say, take it out of me. If you're watching on stream, type, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, oh God, take it out of me. And our cry is, oh, 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 take it out of me. Father, we want to please you in every area of our lives. And so we be still for a moment to allow you to take out what is not pleasing to you right now, even before the word begins. 
just begin to perform surgery on the inside of us. That you be glorified and the body of Christ be edified. That we can go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. We honor you in our temple, O oh God. For you alone are worthy. You alone are God. And we exalt thee. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. It's okay to shabak him. It's okay to Hallelujah. 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 It's so good to see so many of you here in the place. You may be seated. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Oh, I honor my God this morning. I thank him for being my God. I thank Jesus for being my savior. I thank Holy Spirit for being my another comforter, my teacher. Oh, my revealer of truth. I am so grateful. And listen, for those of you who are watching, um, we thank you for watching this morning. We encourage you if you've not done so on whatever platform you're on. Go ahead and like and follow us. Uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube page. Um, check in. Let us know that you're here. For those that are in the house, check in. Start a watch party. Amen on your timeline. And I want to encourage you to tag five people, to tag five people. Because in doing so, you're helping to spread the gospel. And what that means is you're watering and planting as God is giving the increase. You're edifying the saints. Listen, on social media, God is using you. Amen. Wherever you are, God is using you. So go ahead, like and follow, subscribe, check in, start a watch party on your timeline. Tag five people at least. Amen. Well, I honor God, as I said earlier, and I honor my husband, my bishop. I bless you. I thank God for you, man of God. Amen. Amen. And then I want to take the time to honor all of our ministerial staff. I'm telling you, over uh, since July and into August, we've had some great teachers to, to take the platform, to bring an encouraging word. Come on, with me. Can you thank God for the pastors and the elders in this room? Thank you. Thank you. throughout the week to make it possible for us to come here and they're behind the scenes and they work so flawlessly and so I want to thank God for them as too. I don't want to give, take anybody for granted and of course for those of you who are watching listen I honor you today praise God amen you may be listening on the prayer line but I thank you so very much Amen. Amen. Visit our website. If you're not watching from our website, we encourage you to visit it after the service and go to sermons and there you can um, see all the sermons that have been taught on Sunday, on Wednesday, and even the Refreshing Kids Ministry. They have a video, plus, tons of videos up there. The one that is for today is on prayer and the, the staff that put that together, they've done a phenomenal job. In fact, every staff member of RKC and their leadership, they're doing such a great work Amen. to make sure that the children are hearing the word of God and are receiving. Oh, if we're going to clap, we might as well clap now. Amen. 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 And then, of course, our Wednesday night teachings. Let me just uh, open this in prayer again for this teaching. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the comeback. <laughs> I thank you how you brought me back. <laughs> I thank you how you healed my body. <laughs> I thank you how you delivered me. I thank you for the time that Bishop and I were able to do workcation and staycation. Oh, Father, I thank you for allowing Holy Spirit to lead and guide me, even through this teaching. 
And according to Psalm 19 and my belief in your word, I declare that the teachings of the Lord are perfect. They renew the soul. The testimony of the Lord is dependable. It makes gullible people wise. The instructions of the Lord are correct. They make the heart rejoice. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts from my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my defender. And Father, for those who are watching or listening, live or later, I decree that this lesson will minister to their hearts. I decree that this lesson will widen and deepen their capacity to receive the word, contain the word, live the word, and regurgitate the word to edify the body and for a world in need of a savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles or if you're using your um, device, if you'll lift it up so we can make our confession of faith. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer and not just a hearer. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And it's because of the Word of God, my life, will never, ever, never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So I'm starting a new series today, and on July the 6th, 2006, it was the first time that I taught this series. The series is entitled Developing Your Love Walk. Yes. Now I must admit, it was then and continues to be one of the most powerful teachings that I've taught. And since that time, a lot has happened, even as it is relating to love. Some have fallen out of love since that time. Some have gained love since that time. Some have tried to redefine love. Some have injected and spewed hate out of what they are calling a love loyalty to a specific group or a sector. And no matter who you are, I submit, and how you have operated, I submit that all of us are in need of developing in our love walk. If you will go with me to Psalm 63, um, I'm going to read the King James Version and then I'm going to quote the NIV, and the same is true for the other foundational scriptures. And it was going to come as a result of us 
to build and hear me, but the vessels who have an abundance of love in their hearts. In other words, praise the Lord. Okay, and for those of you who are on Facebook, we want to encourage you to go to our website. They're having some problems on Facebook. So we encourage you to go to our website, refreshinglives.org, and you will be able to watch. Uh, it's picked up from, through YouTube. Amen? Amen? All right, thank you. So however, uh, the re relevancy of the abundance of love is not on those who are inside the building. right fellowship. It will be used to speak to those who are hopeless to bring hope. It will be used to speak to those who are being tormented to be set free. It will be used to set those who are in bondage out of bondage. It's an abundance of love that we have in our heart that will draw people into the kingdom of God. The glory of God will come upon you and upon me as we operate in an abundance of love. So hear me, all of us can be working on developing our love walk. The subtitle of today's message in this series is The Purpose of Love, The Purpose of Love. You know, when you think about love, many of us automatically think about John 3.16. The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting love. And we should think about that scripture when we think about love. However, I want to present to you that we sometimes limit ourselves when that is the only scripture reference that we use to refer to when it comes to love. The reason being is because all you have to do in this scripture, all you need to do in this scripture is simply believe. Why? He's done the work. It says God gave. He did the work. His only. He did the work. Begotten son. He and his son did the work. All we have to do is simply believe. Much of what is referred to here is what God and Jesus have done, and then the one requirement of us is to do what? Believe. What is our one requirement? Believe. believe. That's it in this scripture. Believe and you shall have what? Everlasting life. And for some, that is all that they have done. They have simply believed. There is an absence of the application of love from the believer here. Just an action of believing. But there is no application of love for the believer. All we have to do is receive the love that has been deposited for us to receive. That's all we have to do is believe. But we're not required in this scripture to apply love. Just simply believe. There is an absence of knowing love, though it is clear that if we mimic God and his son, we know that love is sacrificial. Maybe that's why all some do is believe, because they know when you love, it's got to cost you something. It costs something to the one who's loving. The one, who, the one paying is the one making the sacrifice to love. You don't hear me. Not the one receiving the love, but the one who is actually making the sacrifice of love, they're the one who's paying. And so consequently, we have received his action of love, but we lack the reciprocation action of expressing love. In man's attempt to redefine love, it has perverted the message of God's love. It has produced a monster that some are calling love. It has punctured the bank withdrawing from some love deposits, causing penalties, leaving folk poor of love and prospering in hate. And here's the problem. Here's the problem. 
we have taken the author of love, the creator of love, the demonstrator of love, the expressor of love, and the love of love out of the equation. His name is God. A lot can be said about one who authors, one who demonstrates, one who expresses, one who is. As an example, my marriage with Bishop is centered on God's love. But if we took him out of the equation, we would have a recipe for chaos, confusion, and ultimately calamity between the two of us. This is what we are seeing today. God is no longer the center of love. The lover of love, the giver of love, and the teacher of love has been removed from the hearts of man. And they have been replaced with ideology, which is absent of theology, with such boldness that they make no apology. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. He has been taken out of the equation and he's been replaced with ideology, with an absence of theology, which some, with much boldness, they're making no apology. So, so you and I can't gain a full understanding or comprehension in this case of love without looking at Jesus, without looking at God, and without looking at the Holy Spirit. That's why this lesson is the purpose of love. Can you say that? Can you tweet that? Can you text that? Can you put that on your timeline, the purpose of love? If you lack the purpose of something, you will lack the application of it as well. If you distort the purpose of something, you will distort the proper application as well. But if you know the purpose for which it was intended and you make application of its intended use, you can then multiply it within you and through the sharing of others. Which would then have the propensity of this thing called love, watch this, uh, to, it will give it the propensity and the power to eradicate that which is opposing it, that thing which is opposing God's love. Amen? But you have to be able to know it, to know its purpose, and to make application of it so that we can increase in love and then drive out hate. Watch this. When you see an application and you trace it to where it started or began, you can oftentimes determine its purpose. Let's revisit Psalm 63 and 6. Psalm 63 and 6. In Psalm 63 and 6, the NIV says, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. So here David is speaking. His application is to glorify God. He states his purpose because your love is better than life. In order for you to make a statement like that, it means that you didn't just believe, but you had an experience with being loved. <laughs> See, David was notorious for finding shelter under God's wing. He knew that God was his defender. Why? Because God had defended him. He knew that God was his protection. Why? Because God had protected him. And David knew that this was a result of God's love. He received God's love, and David loved God. As David did, we must do also. We must understand the love of God. We must understand that whatever God does for us, has done for us, is doing for us, is out of his love. And when you understand the love of God and you receive the love of God and you apply, apply the love of God, then you become a conduit of love. You're able to give what you didn't manufacture. You're giving it because you got it from God. You're able to uh, uh, release what you didn't get yourself on your own, but you're releasing it because you got it from God. We are to be contaminants that not, not Containers, excuse me, not contaminants, but containers of God's love. And wherever we go, we should be leaving droppings of his love. When you walk in the marketplace and people walk past you, they should be experiencing the love of God coming off of you. 
when you're on your job and everybody up there is speaking doubt and having questions and in a place or a position of uncertainty, when you walk in the workplace, it should change the atmosphere. Why? Because you're not coming alone. You're coming wrapped in the love of God. When you're in your home and it seems like there's some confusion and some messes going on and you know it's not of God and you begin to wrap yourself in the love of God and you say to God, I'm the container here. Use me, oh God, to change the atmosphere in my home. I'm the container here. Show me, Holy Spirit, what I must do. Fill me with the love of God and then let me make application of the love that he's filled me with so it can change the atmosphere of my home. See, Knowing God's love, as David did, that will say that there we will find the purpose of God's love. When you know it, you know the purpose. And we can give to him what it is that we have received from him. Hear me. When you receive God's love, you can then give back to God what you receive from him. It goes beyond just believing, but it crosses over into doing something. Hear me, God does not author, he does not create, he does not demonstrate, he does not express or be loved without wanting love back. I'm going to say that again. God does not author, God does not create, God does not demonstrate, God does not express or be loved without wanting love back. That's what the Father wants from us. He wants love. He authored it and he created it. He demonstrated and he expressed it. He is it so he could be a recipient of his own love from his own people. We can see that in Matthew 27. Let's go back there. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. There have been so many songs that have been written about love. And it's interesting that that. The songs that I've heard, and even the songs that I've sung, they lack the true evidence of love because there's no reference to God's love, to the commanding love, the great commandment of love. I'm talking about secular stuff, you know. You know, there's a song, all we need is love, but whose eyes are you looking at love through? There's a song that says, what's love got to do with it? Well, you might answer nothing if you're not looking through it through the proper channel and the proper eyes. You know, we have to look at this as God intended from a biblical perspective. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 37 through 40. I'm going to read through uh, God's word translation. And actually, I'm only going to read verses 37 and 38. Because the other verses we can revisit and the other subtitles of the series. Jesus answered him, referring to the lawyer who was a Pharisee, and said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Not some of it, not a little bit, not what's left over for what you gave to your boo, not what's left over for what you gave to your friends, not what's left over from the person you love but that's not loving you back. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Can I stop there for a moment and give you a nugget that I just got from the throne room of God? When we give him all of our heart, then he is able to protect our heart from the love robbers. Hear me, when we give him all of our heart, then he's able to protect our heart from the love robbers. You will, you will love people, but you will not allow them to rob you of the love that God wants you to have. Your discernment will be keen. You will be able to understand that the love I have for you is a agape, it's not a e e eros. The love I have for you is as a brother or a sister in Christ or even as a non-believer, but you're not supposed to be my boo-boo. It sets things in motion. Amen? So love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That's the whole component of man. This is the greatest and most important commandment. Look, there's no commandment greater than to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. No greater commandment. It's not loving our boo, it's not loving our children, it's not loving others, it's loving God first. That's the greatest of all the commandments. Watch this. You can know someone and still not love them. <laughs> you can believe in someone 
and still not love them. <laughs> Look at the world today. <laughs> or love them the way they want or need to be loved. That's why it's important that we apply God's love in our lives. Demonstrate we know him when we need help from him. That's what we do. We can demonstrate that we know him when we need help from him. Because what do we do? We reach out to him. When we need help, we reach out to the Lord. <laughs> it ain't saying nothing about our love for him. It says, I need help. And so I'm seeking you. I, I need help. This is the kind of love that's referred to in Psalm uh, uh, chapter 30, verse 10. Jehovah Azar, Azar, the Lord my helper. In other words, I'm stretching my hands because I need something, God. I need some help. But can we do this not out of want, but out of love? Can we just stretch our hands to God but just because we love him, just because he's God, just because he's holy, just because he is love, just because he sent his son, just because we have Holy Spirit living on the inside of him? Can we just stretch our hands to him just because? not looking for anything back because he's already given it to us. Can we stretch our hands towards him? Because I say, I'm reaching towards you, God. I'm reaching you to let you know that I absolutely love you. Father, this is our reach when we want to express our love towards you. This reach is powerful because it establishes within us that we know he's more than enough. This reach is powerful because it establishes within us that we recognize without him, we are spiritually limited and spiritually lifeless. His love is the blanket that warms our soul. Ah, oh my, ah, I felt something there. Ha. His love is the antidote, the anesthesia, the answer for our present and our future. His love is assuring. His love is abiding. His love is even affordable. Ha. He doesn't charge you like other people would charge you and they say, I'll give you my love if you pay my bills. I'll give you my love if you give me some. No, he's just saying, I, I already gave it. All you got to do is receive it and then give me some. Give me some love. His love is found in his word and his word is his son Jesus. His love is experienced through the power of Holy Spirit. And then his love, when we operate in it, can be experienced through us to somebody else. God's love. Even now, he's releasing his spirit of love upon us to let us know he's real. You're watching and God wants you to know he's real. You're wondering, can this love kind of love be real? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. The love of God. Even now, wherever you are, if you would just take a moment and lift up your hands. I say, God, I'm giving to you what you've given to me. Your love. Your unconditional love. Your love is the antidote for my life. Your love heals me. Your love covers a multitude of sins. Your love is liberating. Your love sets the captive free. Your love helps me to overcome. It's your love, God, and I thank you for it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you give him some praise? Come on and give him some praise. It's the love of God. It is the love of God. I don't care what faith fight you're in. If you will operate from the position of knowing that God loves you, That'll help you right there. I don't care what faith fight are you in, but if you would just look to the hills from which cometh your help, that'll help you right there. I don't care what faith fight that you're in, but if you'll turn to God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, and love him according to scripture, give him all of you. You know, it's a song that has been sung uh, and I think one of the people that have sung it is uh, sang it is uh, uh, Tasha Cobb. I don't know who sings it, but it's "Give Me You." <laughs> Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope it's not too late. So give me you. Give me you. Give me you. That is a love song about God. 
But I'm here to tell you that so that we remain current and relevant based on the times that we're in, turn that thing around and make that your love song. Can you just say, God, I'm giving me you. Everything else can wait. Yeah, God, I'm giving me you. And I, I, and I just hope it's not too late because the author says, give me you. God, give me you. God's already given us him. We already have him. We have access to him. Really what we should be saying is, let me receive you because I already have you. So if we're going to do it, it's like, God, I'm giving you me. I'm giving you me because everything else can wait. I'm giving you my heart. I'm giving you my soul. I'm giving you my mind. Everything else can wait. I'm putting everything else behind you. I'm resetting the order that you have established in my life. In my life, it's you first, then my family, and then everything else behind. We've gotten things out of order in our lives, and some of it, can I help you, has not been with the intent of not honoring God, but we've allowed life issues and situations to override what we know should be. And so we find ourselves still battling things and trying to figure out, why am I still in this? Perhaps your love order is out of order. Perhaps you're loving that thing, and because that thing let you down, you're trying to fix that thing instead of giving it to the fixer. Perhaps you've authored some things, and it's created a mess in your life, and instead of you going to the author of authors, you're trying to put it together. Just move on over to the author of authors. Perhaps you created some things out of the will of your flesh and not out of the leading of Holy Spirit. And because you didn't do it out of the leading of Holy Spirit, you've created some stuff that needs to be destroyed. Just turn on over there to the creator. Perhaps you've expressed some things, and the things that you've expressed out of your heart and the things that you express out of your mouth towards others are the very things now that's coming back to haunt you. It's coming back to take you out. Listen, what you express with them, just turn on over here to the key expresser and let him know, I need to fix this thing. Perhaps you loved on some things, loved on some people, and the love that you expressed was not the love of God. It wasn't the true love of God. Truly, if you love a thing, that's definitely not the love of God. Amen? Because things are temporal anyway. His expression of love should be a love that we have for him and then a love that we have for people. So what do we do? We turn to the lover of love, and we get our instruction. Amen? So in closing, I want you to go back to John 3.16, and I want you to look at this with me. John 3.16. And I pray you're getting to something out of this lesson. Yes, yes, yes. The King James Version says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So here it is again, the one requirement that we believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Don't just believe about his unconditional love, but show God some unconditional love. Because we read the scripture. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And so if we're going to love him like that, it's going to require us to empty out our own thoughts of love that don't line up with his word, to empty out and let him reorder our life so that he becomes the author and the finisher, not just of our faith, but he gets the first dose of our love. He should get the first dose in the morning. He should get the first dose even at night. He should get the first dose throughout the day. When we're having challenges, he gets the first dose. Give him the love and he'll give you the answer that you need. 
Give him the love and he'll order your footsteps because when you love God, you can trust God. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, I thank you for this deposit of love today. I thank you, Father, that the first commandment, which is the greatest commandment, is that we love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. There have been times we've missed it, oh God. So we repent now. We repent and we put our life in order according to your will. For if things are going to change in the world, it's going to take your love that has been deposited in us and us then turning around and regurgitating that love back. I want you to know, if you're watching, you may not have encountered the love of God as receiving and believing, believing and receiving Jesus as your Savior. Well, he's already loved you, but all you need to do is receive. You need to believe and then receive. So I want to pray for you, and I'm just going to ask you to repeat this prayer and simply mean it in your heart. And say, Father, Father forgive me of my sins. Me of my Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. All I do believe I do. that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was dead, buried, and resurrected, buried, buried, resurrected for me. Jesus, Jesus live in me live in that I may live for you all the days of my life. I receive your love. And I purpose to be one who gives your love. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much for watching. And I want to encourage you, after you've heard this message, I want you to still share it with somebody else. Because if we spread God's love, we can eradicate and destroy hate. So let's begin to spread God's love as never before. Amen? Amen. 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 And now for our announcements, uh, this coming on August the 25th, there will be an RKC staff meeting at 7 p.m. If you're a part of that staff, then you have a meeting at 7. If you're not and perhaps you want to be, I encourage you to reach out to uh, Elder Keita or Elder Greg. August the 28th is Friday at 630 I will be at Latitude. There will be social distancing. Um, we, I personally encourage you, if you're attending, to wear a mask. There is no registration. This will be a touchless service. Amen? And now we have an opportunity to give. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you know that giving is an act of love? It's a demonstration of how we love God. Amen? He gave, what did I say? When, 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 whenever the person that is making the love sacrifice really is the one that can gain, amen? And so we give because we love God. You can give on four different platforms. You can go to Givelify and look for Refreshing Lives Church. Or, excuse me, oh, I'm about to spell refreshing. Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Dot com. You can use Cash App. Simply put in the dollar sign and Refreshing Lives, one word. You can also send a check to Refreshing Lives Church or RLC, and the address is P.O. Box 3005, New Bern, North Carolina, 28564. Or you can go to our website, refreshinglives.org, and click Give, and there you can give. Amen? I want to make a confession over here giving right now. Whether you've used your device or whether you're writing something out or maybe you're not there, and just repeat this and mean it in your heart. Say, Father, Father I thank you I thank that you. giving thank is an act of my love. Just as you gave, I give. And I declare and decree I'm a recipient and the benefit of loving. I thank you right now. Lack is broken off of my life. I thank you right now. Open doors, open portals, 
are coming my way because I am a giver. And because I am a giver, I shall receive it back with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto my bosom. For with the same measure that I meet, it's coming right back at me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, we thank you for being a part of our service today. We're going to get ready to close out. Uh, refreshing lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. you right now that each one of us under the sound of my voice will have a loving refreshing week I declare and decree that all the plots plans and schemes of the enemy are destroyed over our lives because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world it is in Jesus name we do pray and give thanks amen thank you for watching God bless you <laughs>